So by now you've seen how Preactor could be used to uh, create production schedules. Um, but what you haven't seen is how Preactor can be used for simulation of unusual or unique requirements. Um, and that puts us into the realm of a little bit of a simulation. And today we're going to go through um, how Preactor can deal with um, ovens, things like annealing ovens, furnaces, and things like that. So to begin with, I'm going to just look at a standard Preactor schedule and run what a typical sequence would be, which is uh, typically from an ERP, we'll go with forwards by due date. And it's a very common way of scheduling. And we'll zoom in here on three resources, a bake oven, a furnace oven, and uh, another, another furnace. Um, let me just zoom into that one a little bit. So what we have is a standard preactor sequence. And essentially, these sequence go, a job is ready to go, it goes to the furnace. Another job is ready to go, it goes to the furnace, et cetera. The standard way preactor does things. But what that does in reality on a production floor is you have this staggered entry into these ovens. And if you ever worked with ovens or annealing ovens or whatever, you don't constantly open and close the door when stuff shows up. You tend to spool stuff up or like, gather things in front of the oven until you reach a certain point where, okay, now it's time to open the oven, we'll open the door and we'll push it in. So what we have to do is somehow get Preactor to enable us to start lining these things, these little jobs up so that they all essentially start at the same time. Okay, and obviously I'm not gonna sit here manually and try and schedule everything this way, but that's the effect that we're looking for. So a couple of things that we have to tell Preactor about to get to the point where we can simulate these, this sort of condition. The first of all is, we need to give Preactor some idea of what is that limit in front of um, an oven that we need to reach. So for this particular um, example, we just have some kind of maximum value. And in this case, for this particular oven, which is this particular furnace, we have a maximum value of 100. Now that 100 can be anything from a number of trays that you load onto racks before you put it into the oven. It can be a physical space. It could be absolutely anything that you can define to say, okay, now we've reached that limit. We can open the, the uh, oven door, put our star stuff in it, and let it, um, let it bake or let it be in there for as long as it needs to. So that's the first thing we have to do. Secondly, we have to tell Preactor which ones of these resources are actually ovens. What we actually have to do is this, it's a little checkbox which says, okay, I'm, I'm treating ovens and furnaces the same way. This is a bake oven. This is a furnace. We have one more thing here called a two hour furnace, furnace time limit. And what this is, is the ability to tell Preactor, well, you've not reached that limit yet, but I don't want to wait more than two hours before I put this stuff in. Because if you don't have some kind of limit there, you may only get half an oven's worth of stuff and you never open the door because you didn't wipe. So you, eventually you have to put stuff in the oven. So we have built in a two hour limit. So we're only going to spool stuff up for a maximum of two hours up to that actual limit. So given all that, what we now use is a Preactor API, which allows us to create an actual scheduling sequence. So what I'm gonna do is, um, if you remember the way that the Preactor did it before, this is our standard sequencing by due date, um, where we've got the staggered entry, which is what we don't want. So now we're gonna actually run a Preactor oven rule. And the oven rule accesses the Preactor API and allows us to identify jobs that are going into the oven, whether they can go in straight away because of their limits or whether they need to wait until another job shows up, then check that limit until another job shows up. And then finally, when we reach that limit, we can go ahead and schedule it. So actually, before I run the rule, I'm gonna turn animation on just so that we can see how things are actually working and see if we can catch what Preactor is doing. So we'll run the APS rule, run the oven rule, and let it start running. And if we take a look up here at the furnace, you can see, as Preactor is working, it is starting to line things up. Let it run for a little bit. It's gonna come back and do a refresh and another run. The animation works a little weird sometimes, but now, it has, now that we've lined up everything, that has affected some downstream operations. So we're gonna do run a sort of a schedule repair to make sure everything's in the perfect sequence. And notice it did take a little extra time. That's partially because we had the animation turned on, but also because there's more decisions for Preactor to make. But now if we take a look at those bake ovens, we've got four jobs lined up 
before they reach some kind of limit before we, we put the stuff in. On the furnace, we've got three jobs lined up. These two jobs lined up, and apparently we, got, we put them in there because they couldn't wait any longer. And you can see as Preact was constantly running the sequence, it's lining up those entries. So we get that put, uh, correct, open the door once and put stuff in. And take a look over here at the plots. We can see that limit in action. Um, here's the bake oven with this maximum of 100. You can see that in some cases it is reaching that maximum and then we open the door. Other cases we had to, uh, we couldn't wait any longer, so we went and put stuff in it. Um, the furnace has also has a limit of 100 and we reached that once. And then this particular furnace, the poly, didn't have a lot of jobs, but it's right at that limit of we've spooled up enough stuff in front of it and we've now entered, uh, entered the oven. So in a nutshell, that's a simple way that we can use Preactor's API to actually influence the way that Preactor schedules. So over and above the fact that we've got data from an ERP system, for example, that's all well and good as production data, but we need to actually be able to simulate what the real world things that actually happen on the floor. And one of the reasons we have to simulate that is because of all these downstream operations. We don't get the furnace operations correct, the downstream operations are starting at the incorrect time. So now that we've got everything sequenced, everything is in a proper sequence and we're scheduling exactly um, as, as we should. 